So what is virtual pet, right? Um, in, a, in a scenario where there is no WAF in place, what happens is there's an application, the application has some vulnerabilities. Now it is exposed over internet, hacker comes in, probes these application, finds any vulnerability and exploits it and data gets breached. This is a scenario without WAF and virtual patching in place. Now with WAF in place, what happens? WAF comes in line to the traffic from internet to your application, right? So all the traffic over the internet comes through WAF, WAF inspects it and sends the traffic back to your application. So now when a hacker probes, right? When he tries to probe for a vulnerability, that traffic goes through WAF. Now the WAF knows that he is probing for a vulnerability and he knows that he's trying to exploit the vulnerability. So this WAF would be based on the behavior of the hackers and trying to it and the hacker trying to exploit the vulnerability, it will block those requests, right? So that there is no chance for hacker to go to the application and exploit the vulnerability in, uh, in a real life scenario. And this is what we call it as virtual patch, right? So essentially, well, as the name suggests, right? Instead of when you patch it in the code, it is patching. When you virtually patch it in WAF and uh, though the vulnerability still remains in application, you virtually patch it in WAF. So that's why, why we call it virtual patching. So how does this actually play out in a real life scenario, right? So let's take an example, right? Uh, this is one of the vulnerabilities that was uh, that was found in uh, yes, uh, in last year, right? And it's a, it's a vulnerability that was found in Spring Framework. Spring Framework is a widely used framework for Java in Java applications, which is used uh, for um, MVC controllers, where it it helps in memory management and. Uh, configuration management, right? So it's a widely used uh, framework uh, in all the Java applications. And a RCE vulnerability was found in this, uh, in this framework. RCE is a remote code execution vulnerability, which essentially means hacker exploiting this vulnerability can uh, push in uh, some code or snippets into the server and make it executed from a from a remote, right? So he hacker sitting in a remote location could inject a, a code snippet and make it run in the server, which eventually mean he could push in a malware, uh, he could uh, push in a remote code, uh, which executes and then gives him so uh, permissions for the entire server, and then he can do and go and do lot of things. That's why remote code executions are generally very critical, and any remote code exe execution vulnerability should be treated at, at a high severity. So now, uh, when this, it was a zero day vulnerability, right? And when this vulnerability was uh, reported, uh, a patch was made available. But again, the solution which was recommended was, hey, please upgrade the patch. But now we have discussed what is the challenges in getting that going, right? Okay, now this vulnerability is found, you have to get it upgraded, but Updating a updating a version of framework is not that easy, right? Depending on where which stage of the organization, and they might be using an older version of it, or getting it has to go through a sanity test. It goes through the, all all the all the problems that we talked about uh, in the previous session. So, what next? What other can be uh, can be done? What can be done is a virtual patch can be created in WAF. And how was a virtual patch created? See the the attack was essentially exploiting the vulnerability where uh, there are class objects and there are various param parameters of these class object. And hacker was uh, using the vulnerability to get access to uh, these parameters uh, which they should not have access to and then use that for RC, right? And the way they were getting this access to was using this class module close loader uh, function code. So, uh, one of the things that uh, the security, our security team said was, hey, this is not a function call which will be commonly used from a from a remote location, right? It should be a local function calls and it should not be, there are very little reasons to make it call over the internet. So if the payload has this class module prior class loader function in it, then block that request. So which eventually means that if any hacker tries to exploit this vulnerability, 
he would be immediately caught and a request will never reach the application. And so the exploit of those vulnerabilities would be avoided, right? Uh, there could be certain cases where uh, the for some reasons this code has to be called, but again, that would be when a very specific reason. It would be from some, some remote server. So you could just whitelist for those uh, IPs, but block for common requests that is coming in with this function. So an exception can be made based on the application's need. And this is what is called, uh, this is what we call as uh, virtual patching and doing a surgically surgically accurate rule based on the application's need. It is not just blindly saying that, hey, just because this function is there, block it, right? It is also like looking at the context where it should be called and where it should be, uh, for which request it should be uh, blocked for, and also having the ability to uh, create this um, exceptions based on the application need. And the unique uh, proposition that we bring to the table is that we, we create these virtual patches for our customers, so we don't expect customers to have the security expertise. So they can just request for these custom rules from the portal and then our team would uh, write these rules within an um, within a lot of SLAs generally for such critical vulnerabilities, it is 24 hours and then high vulnerabilities, what it, uh, what it does. So eventually what happens is a vulnerability when found, generally in average when it takes more than 180 days, in this case, because BAF was there and we were there to create those surgically accurate custom rules, the vulnerability was patched for our customers within a day or two, right? Um, mostly in a day because this was a critical vulnerability. So it, we ensured that all our customers who are have, using these frameworks were immediately patched. So within a day from the time the zero day vulnerability was reported, all our customers were protected, right? So now, the customers have the leg room. They can go and work, the security team can go and work with the application team, try and get it prioritized and have it fixed in the application. 